I've noticed that there's two main categories of electronic drummer and they're seemingly at odds with each other's interests, and one of them appears to be shaping the current market more than the other. But is that to the benefit or the detriment of the instrument? And which category do you fall under? Let's get to it. Hey, Luke here at the eDrum Workshop, I hope you're having a great day. If you're new to the channel and you enjoy any aspect of electronic or hybrid drums, hit that subscribe button and the bell so you don't miss any eDrum related content. Now, of course, not everybody's going to fit neatly into the two categories that I'm going to go into. I kind of straddled the line between the two myself, but I've noticed that there's a trend for people to fall closer to one end of this spectrum or the other. So today we're going to explore the two main categories of electronic drummer as I see it, and discuss which side of the spectrum is currently winning out in the market. And of course, this is all in good fun and we're talking in very broad terms here. Both sides of the coin have their own merits. So type number one is what I would call the e-drum purist. This is the e-drummer that believes that the unlimited potential of electronic drums is the only strength worth its salt, and that trying to replicate acoustic drums either physically or sonically is a fool's game. You need to stop lying to yourself with your conversions and your impractical shells. Pad kits look cool, and did you know that you can trigger your t-shirt with a piezo? That's the power of electronics. In seriousness, there's some very good points to be made about what constitutes a good sound from electronic drums, but there's an argument that I do hear a lot from this line of thinking that personally I think is flawed, and I'm going to get into that after I outline what I do agree with. I do think that narrowing down our idea of what a good sound is to only acoustic replications, or maybe the odd bit of percussion, is a pretty limited way of looking at things when there's so many other possibilities out there. Some people really do enjoy experimenting with sounds. You can take anything you want and mould it into anything else. If it sounds good in the music, worrying about whether or not it's technically a snare sound seems a little bit arbitrary. And even with more acoustic-like sounds, there's joy to be found in really sculpting that perfect kick sound, picking out the exact kind of attack you want, the tuning, how long it sustains for, and knowing that nobody else out there is using the exact sound that you're using. Sure, they've got the same tools at their disposal, but so do other artists and you don't see them all drawing the same pictures, or painting with only three different colours. And as far as the aesthetics go, why do we need e-drums to look just like acoustic drums? Especially when you can trigger almost any surface. Being locked into this mindset of having your electronics fit the exact dimensions of your acoustic kit can seem like another limitation just for limitation's sake. You don't need all that excessive weight and bulk to make those pads work, so why would you add that on for no real practical or functional reason? Drummers already have some of the bulkier setups of any musician, and after years of lugging around a million cases, having the ability to have infinite sounds contained in something the size of a guitar or a keyboard is a massive advantage. And you can still play these things with the skill set that you've developed on your acoustic drums. But you don't need to reach out for miles just to hit that one sound that you only use in one part of one song. People are just being too vain to allow real change to happen. And we're all holding on to something just because that's how it was, so therefore that's how it needs to stay. Now the argument that I mentioned before that's brought up a lot by people in this camp goes along the lines of this. What if guitarists took the same attitude that we're taking to electric guitar? If they never became their own instruments, we wouldn't have most of today's music. And I'm not out to fully denigrate this point. As I said, I agree with the idea that as musicians we shouldn't reject new technologies or ideas. We should embrace them because ultimately it means we'll be able to create more interesting and exciting music, rather than closing ourselves off to innovation. However, there are a few layers of this argument that I'd like to pick apart and dig into a little bit more. And handily, that segues nicely into the next subset of Electronic Drummer. One of the the main things that I think distinguishes what happened with electric guitars to what's happening with electronic drums is that they were conceived for almost entirely opposite reasons. Electric guitars were mostly made as a way to amplify the instrument. This was an instrument that previously couldn't be heard that well over other instruments in an ensemble, and therefore often didn't take the leading role. Figuring out how to amplify guitars was the starting point that people desired. The possibly unintended consequence being that this form of amplification gave guitars a completely different sound. This went on to create new kinds of music and became cool in its own right because the guitar was now more of a focal point. Electronic drums, from what I've read, but feel free to add to this or correct me in the comments. 
were pretty much conceived as a way for a human to play the new electronic drum sounds that were already on records. This was less about trying to take one instrument and make it into something else, and this was more a case of allowing a person to control these electronic sounds with an interface that's similar enough to the drums that we already played. So from the beginning this approach was quite different. And it didn't really do anything to specifically bring drums to the forefront of the stage in the same way that an electric guitar did. Add to this the fact that many of the surfaces that have been available over the years for triggering these sounds have been awful to play on and been pretty aesthetically unappealing to a lot of people, and you don't quite get the same effect. There's also the fact that with an electric guitar, you're processing the signal and exactly what you play in a more direct way. With electronic drums, you're triggering a pre-created sound from an impulse from a pad in a completely different way that requires completely different technology. And this technology wasn't very good at being convincing or translating exactly what you're doing for a very long time, and it was very limited in how it could produce its sounds. A lot of people love the style of the sounds from early electronic drums, and of course that's always going to come down to personal taste, but it's hard to deny that a lot of the sound characteristics were born from the limitations of the technology rather than desire. I think that there's probably a closer parallel with the digital piano and keyboard market, and I'll touch on that shortly. The other main difference here is that drums are already loud. Really loud. We love the instrument, but we can't always play it when or where we want due to this excessive volume. So as the technology improved enough to translate people's playing better, people wanted a different ideal from their electronic drums to be able to effectively play their acoustic drums but with a volume knob. And this is now the main factor driving the direction of the e-drum market. And of course, with that comes the other main type of electronic drummer, the circumstantial e-drummer. These are mostly drummers that play electronic drums because they have to for various reasons. Just being able to quietly practice at home without bothering the neighbours, or turning things down a bit because they're suffering hearing problems from playing acoustic drums for so long or even that they're struggling to get work in gigs because venues are now introducing more volume controls. And a lot of the time, these drummers aren't really looking to push the envelope in terms of sound creation or unique features. They're more interested in being able to transfer their skills over to a quieter variation of their instrument in the most accurate way possible. Yeah, they're happy to make use of some of the advantages that e-drums bring. The ability to have as many different drum kits at their fingertips as possible, being able to make their kit sound bigger or more impressive than they can do with their acoustics, or to easily record drum parts or videos without years of studio experience, or a dedicated soundproofed room with tons of microphones. Diving deep into learning the technology inside out isn't really usually on their radar either. I just want to be able to sit down by my kit and it sounds just like John Bonham. My acoustic kit lets me do that without any processing whatsoever, so my electronic drum should give me that exact same experience. But really, there's value in being able to sit down and play a kit without having to spend hours custom building your own sounds from the ground up. And the same goes for the aesthetics, really. If you're driven towards electronic drums out of necessity rather than because you specifically want to play them, having them look and feel more like your acoustic kit can really enhance that relationship that you have with the instrument and the playability. There's a big increase of inspiration that you can get from sitting down behind an instrument that really excites you. And if the aesthetics are part of that package for you, then that's all the more reason to try and emulate how your acoustic kit looks. Now this all ties back to what I mentioned earlier about the digital piano market, or the keyboard and synth synthesizer market. Are they all the same market? I don't think so, so there's parallels here. I've heard the same kind of argument for electric guitars leveled towards the digital piano industry. People that play digital pianos are thankful that they can fit their instrument into a smaller form factor. So we should just be happy with e-drum pads, right? Well, this is an interesting thing that I think is finally being at least partially addressed by the e-drum market. The difference here is that in my opinion, although a digital piano can have a much smaller footprint, most of the time the playing surface is maintained. So you're cutting off the bulk of what makes an acoustic piano, but leaving the part that you interact with more intact. Of course, the option to have more or fewer keys is there, but I think the most successful digital pianos are the ones that are emulating acoustic pianos in at least some way. They're keeping the keys the same size, they're weighting the keys to make them feel more like acoustic piano keys, and other similarities that help bring the experience closer to a real piano. For many years, e-drums were cutting out the bulkiness of the acoustic shells, but they were also trimming down the playing surfaces. Trying to find 14-inch pads was almost impossible, and thin 16-inch pads are still something I don't think I've seen anywhere. 
This is now improving with options like the Gaver G9 Studio Kit and the Pearl Emerge where they've got larger heads but still thinner pads, but there's still not as many on the market as I think many people would like. And I think that people who've hated e-drums for years would have been a little bit more forgiving if those acoustic-like head sizes had been more intact across the product range, even if the shells weren't there yet. And another part of the keyboard industry that I think mirrors where electronic drums are heading is that distinction between product lines. You've got digital pianos that are aiming to play and feel as close to an acoustic piano as possible. Then you've got other keyboards that are more along the lines of having different sounds and options available, or generally just for cheaper or more compact practice. And then you have synthesizers, completely unique instruments that have a similar playing surface to keyboards and digital pianos, but offer full-blown sound creation options for those who want them, and are a little bit more liberal with the size of their playing surfaces. All three of these options have their own defined place in the market. People don't usually recommend a synthesizer for those who are just trying to rehearse their piano parts, as much as they're not necessarily recommending digital pianos for those who want to push the boundaries of electronic music. But of course there will be that crossover depending on people's wants and needs. There's a very obvious comparison to be drawn between those who are big into synthesizers and the e-drum purist type of electronic drummer that I outlined earlier. They're happy to dig into the technical aspects of their instrument, learn what everything does and craft their own sounds. The drumming or piano skills are just the way of interacting with these different interfaces. And I'm hoping that down the line there'll be enough of a market on each side of the e-drum fence to really push for both of these styles of e-drum to have a large range of options available. At the moment, the market seems to be chasing what appears to be the largest audience. But I do think that once that audience opens up enough, more people will be looking at what other things they can do with their e-drums too. It would be really handy if this division between the two main types of e-drummer was really this clear cut. But of course, there is a crossover. As I said earlier, I'm somewhere in between. I originally got into electronic drums purely as a practice tool while I was at university, but now I sit somewhere between wanting awesome acoustic sounds and creating brand new ones to create new experiences. And I'm sure that there's many of you out there in the various shades of grey between the two worlds. But I do think that it's useful to have this split in mind when we're talking about what we want from the industry, because it helps us manage our expectations better, and to fully understand better where products or companies are trying to align themselves. And maybe down the line there'll even be new terms to help better define each kind of electronic drum and who it's aimed at. So where do you fit into all of this? Are you firmly in one camp or the other? Or do you slip in between the two at will depending on your needs? Do you think my comparisons hold up or have I missed anything obvious? What other kinds of electronic drum products do you want to see? Let me know your thoughts down in the comments. If you enjoyed this video, pop a like on it and subscribe if you haven't already for more of this type of content. If you want to know more about circumstantial e-drummers and why they like their acoustic to electronic conversions so much, go check out this video. Or if not, have a look at this one that YouTube thinks you'll like. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Cheers. ...change for the sake of being stuck in the past. I think that was the post.